to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Acts chapter 7. This was the Matthias Stephen about to be stoned. Acts chapter 7 from verse 54 please Acts chapter 7 don't be tired of learning scripture it gives you accuracy of understanding and then you are able to walk in the reality of the power and the grace of God on the strength of the spiritual illumination you have it says when they had heard these things they were caught to the heart and gnashed when they heard these things, they were caught to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Verse 55. Now, the Bible says, but he, Stephen now, being full of the Holy Ghost. So who was in Stephen? The Holy Spirit. He looked steadfastly into heaven. What did he see? The glory of God and then Jesus standing at the right hand. So we see the Holy Spirit in Stephen. God manifesting in his glory, the Father and the Son standing at his right hand. Why am I saying this thing? So that you will believe from scripture, not from opinion, not from charismatism, from scripture. If your confidence is just based on what someone said, it would dwindle with time. But when your faith is anchored on scripture, it becomes unbending. You become immovable. Are we together now? Now, the word spirit comes from the Latin word spiritus. It means breath spiritus spi as numa all mean the same thing these are expressions of spirit are we together so a spirit typically speaking um generally it just means the life-giving factor of anything the life-giving factor of anything is the spirit of that thing are we together general who is the holy spirit Number one, the Holy Spirit is God. Acts chapter 5 from verse 3 to 4, please. The Holy Spirit is God. This was the story of Ananias and Sapphira. We're proving that the Holy Spirit is not just an archangel. There are many well-meaning, sincere people who have carried teachings all around. The Holy Spirit is not an archangel. The Holy Spirit is not a man. The Holy Spirit is is God in every way he's not junior to God he's not one of the errant people in heaven he is God in every way but Peter said Ananias why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost are you saying that now and to keep back part of the price of the land verse 4 whilst it remained was it not thine after it was sold was it not in thine own power why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart Thou hast not lied to men, but to God. Peter now says, you have lied to the Holy Ghost. And then you have lied to God. The Holy Ghost is God in every way. Number two, very quickly. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the manifestation of of the presence and the power of God the Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of God he is not just the manifestation he is the revealer of the presence and the power of God the Holy Spirit Benny Hinn calls him the unlimited presence of Jesus how true based on scripture he gives omnipotence to the presence of he could only be in one location at a time but now the holy spirit has come to multiply the influence of jesus 
across the earth he is the continuation of the ministry of jesus but now not just localized to one man he can be everywhere at the same time so the holy spirit is a revealer he is also the manifestation of the presence of god are we learning this is very very important number three very quickly who is the holy spirit the bible calls the holy spirit the wisdom of god this is very powerful wisdom the wisdom of god isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 isaiah 11 and verse 2 and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him he says the spirit of wisdom the holy spirit is called the spirit of wisdom that means he is the life-giving force behind every manifestation of divine wisdom there are three levels of wisdom as the bible teaches there is wisdom that comes from above that is first pure there is wisdom that is scientific sophia that comes with experimentation and experience there is wisdom that is diabolical and demonic the wisdom we are talking about is wisdom that comes from above are we together the spirit of wisdom ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 paul is praying now ephesians 1 and verse 17 that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom so the holy spirit is called the spirit of wisdom next point who is the holy spirit this is a very very important point i'm about to bring about the holy spirit the holy spirit is the author of scripture the holy spirit is the authentic author of scripture not just paul not just david the psalmist not just matthew mark luke and john the holy spirit is the author of scripture second peter chapter 1 please and verse 21 second peter chapter 1 and verse 21 second peter 1 21 hallelujah you can't find it go to second timothy chapter 3 from verse 15 second timothy 3 from verse 15 and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make thee wise unto salvation listen carefully through faith which is in jesus christ next verse it says all scripture how many all scripture old testament the gospel acts of the apostles the epistles revelation all scripture is given by inspiration of god by inspiration of god is profitable for doctrine reproof correction instruction in righteousness verse 16 it says 17 now that the man of god may be mature and furnished unto all good works i don't know why they didn't find second peter is a mistake from me it says holy men wrote as they were inspired of the spirit so holy men only did the writing the author was god how many of you have seen people who translate the messages of others into books the translators cannot say the book is their own is that true the original person thank you second peter 1 21 for prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man but holy men spake as they were moved by the holy ghost if you help me transcribe my thoughts into a book you will be rewarded for your intelligence but the creativity and the intellectual property remains my own is that true so who really is the author of scripture no it can't be peter it can't be john they were moved by the holy spirit why is this important because if you ignore the holy spirit in an attempt to learn scripture you will end up in error listen carefully the source of error the real source of error is to just be scientific about the bible and ignore the person of the holy spirit in as much as the bible 
is truly an archaeological book a historical book a piece of literature but it is empowered with mysteries that only the author can unravel if the holy spirit does not assist you in opening scripture then you find out that you'll be reading history you'll be reading archaeology you'll be reading literature poetry and not have the requisite level of edification that comes with this this book is both closed and sealed you can open it but only the holy spirit can unlock the seals are we together the holy spirit is the author of scripture that means the next time you open your bible to study the publishers of this book were not the authors of the book they only made it available to us holy spirit you are the author of scripture open my eyes and you will be surprised at the things that you will see it says open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from out of thy law is god blessing us the holy spirit is the author of scripture now the holy spirit was revealed in the old testament like we know he came upon great men and women to do exploits but the character of his manifestation listen carefully you would notice that there was hardly a description of deep intimacy and fellowship with the holy spirit in fact the person who came closest as far as relationship with the holy spirit is concerned was david the man david cast me not away from your presence he said take not your spirit from me are we together but generally speaking the holy spirit would come upon men in the old testament prophets priests kings and then he would perform something supernatural through them and return back so they knew his power but they did not have the opportunity to know and learn the holy spirit in a very intimate way they experienced the power of the holy spirit but they did not have the privilege of what we call today koinonia the fellowship of the spirit hallelujah are we still together christianity becomes a religion if and when the ministry of the holy spirit is ignored it is the presence and the ministry of the holy spirit in this faith work that gives excitement to this adventure he is responsible for the exploits that men and women command in this kingdom write this down please it was the holy spirit who birthed the church romans chapter 8 and verse 15 you also find that in acts chapter 2 from verse 1 the holy spirit was the one who birthed the church the bible says for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby as a family we can now cry abba father he brought us into this family acts chapter 2 and verse 1 when you read the bible says when the day of pentecost was fully come they were gathered together in one accord suddenly verse 2 there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty a rushing mighty wind it filled the house where they were sitting there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire and it came and sat on each of them uh-huh verse 4 the bible says and they were filled with the holy ghost so the holy ghost birthed the church and if the church ignores him today then we'll become something else aside the church are we together we must bring back to our consciousness the person and the ministry of the holy spirit beyond religion beyond the fivefold let me tell you this the holy spirit is not a privilege of men and women of god in the gospel no the holy spirit is for everyone he's not just for pastors apostles prophets, believer and unbeliever and creation generally speaking it's more than just the salvation experience as you'll be learning shortly are we together praise the name of the lord because for many people the moment you begin to talk of the ministry of the holy spirit here's what they tell you i'm not called into ministry just leave me i'm a businessman i will keep giving you money while you keep knowing him and go and do your crusade there show us the ancient path will you lead us along 
We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to end. Now listen, the Holy Spirit is not only God. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is a person. He has the attributes of personhood. This is very powerful. The Holy Spirit, I've told you here that he's not just wind. He manifests as all those elements, but he's not them. The Holy Spirit has the attributes of person, of personhood. He has a personality. What makes someone a personality? The presence of a will, the presence of emotions, the presence of an intellect. There's no time to begin to deal with this, but let's, I, I've, I've done the, this teaching um, describing the personhood of the Holy Spirit, but for the sake of what we're dealing with tonight, let's just look at it one scripture each will. Number one, acts chapter 16 from verse 6 to 7 please very quickly help us we're proving that the holy spirit is a person the bible says when they had gone throughout all the region of galatia they were forbidden of the holy ghost he has a will the holy spirit forbade them verse 7 it says and after they were come to all of those names they went to those places but the holy spirit suffered them not he restrains them the holy spirit has an independent will it's very important first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11 first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11 11 but all these walk at that one and the same self spirit dividing to every man severally as he wills the holy spirit has a will the Holy Spirit has emotions. Ephesians 4 and verse 30. Ephesians 4 and verse 30. The Holy Spirit has emotions. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. If he was not sensitive to that action, the Bible would not ask you to not grieve him. He says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you were sealed unto the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit has intellect, intelligence. Romans 8.27 Romans 8 27 the Bible says he that searched the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit why because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God he knows what is the mind of the spirit first Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 write it down please first corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 we're looking at 10 and 11 the bible says but god had revealed them to us by his spirit for the spirit searches there is intelligence with the spirit the holy spirit is not a robot there is intelligence to him he searches all things yea the deep things of god for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god the bible reveals to us very quickly the purpose of the holy spirit we need to know why the holy spirit was sent why do we talk so much about him why did jesus talk so much about him The Holy Spirit has basically a threefold, a threefold ministry. A threefold ministry. Number one, he has the ministry of conviction. Number two, the Holy Spirit goes, This is the scope of his assignment. Conviction. What does it mean to convict? to bring to your awareness to compel you to pay attention to an object or a truth the holy spirit he's the one behind every kind of godly conviction number two the ministry of transformation what is transformation the name given to the process that makes you like christ in experience is called transformation 
my little children he says on whom i travail until christ be formed in you then the ministry of empowerment what does it mean to empower to empower means to engrace you to engrace you so that you are able to produce results that ordinarily you would not be able to produce are we together all of the long stories that i started with giving the theological background is to this intent listen carefully this is the core of my teaching now anywhere you find the holy spirit on earth it is one of these three things he's doing conviction transformation empowerment look at me uh, we're going to discuss his ministry uh, and the objects the recipients who are the candidates that qualify for his ministry but until then i want you to understand something every time you see an unbeliever the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation never forget this the greatest need of an unbeliever is not house rent the greatest need of an unbeliever is not the hospital the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation the greatest need of a believer is transformation when a believer is saved the next assignment of the holy spirit is to sponsor transformation an heir for as long as he's a child the bible says he differeth not from a slave though he be lord of all are we together transformation then the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment this is the sequence every time look just learning this alone will make you a matured christian so you you know how to bless people according to the categories when you see an unbeliever your principal assignment is to stand in partnership with the holy spirit to the end that he becomes a recipient of the life of god no matter what you do to an unbeliever if he has not received salvation you have not given him the greatest gift for a believer the greatest gift you can give a believer is an atmosphere and an information that can lead to transformation you can give miracles you can build a house you can bring breakthrough you can bring healing none of those things are superior in themselves the most superior blessing that you can give a believer is access to light illumination bringing him to a place of transformation then for a believer that is transformed the greatest need for a transformed believer is now to be able to prove and defend his proposition and for that he will need empowerment are you seeing that now just having this knowledge alone will make you such a mature christian and you will know how to help people you don't start talking about salvation to one who is already saved except you're just teaching him and mentoring him to also be an effective evangelist a non-believer salvation a believer transformation a transformed believer empowerment are we together and may i add that the greatest need of an empowered believer is character and humility when a believer is empowered he now needs character and humility because knowledge can puff up remember our teaching we just finished a series on witnesses So the Holy Spirit has a threefold ministry conviction, transformation, empowerment. Conviction, transformation, empowerment. Now, write this down, please. Who are the three principal recipients of the ministry of the Holy Spirit? According to Scripture, there are three principal recipients of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number one, creation. You will be surprised to know that creation depends on the holy spirit to survive the holy spirit is not just a reality for christians or non-christians without the holy spirit creation cannot survive it was the lights that came from him that sponsored creation coming back again withdraw the holy spirit is not only men that would die creation will also die are we together job 34 from verse 14 and 15 the first recipient the first recipient of the ministry of the holy spirit is the entire creation from verse 14 and 15 
if he set his heart upon man if he gather on to himself his spirit and his breath what happens to creation all flesh shall perish together and all man shall turn again to dust that means if god withdraws the holy spirit literally out of earth right now men will wither creation will wither science will come to naught the holy spirit is the life-giving factor of creation this is true the first recipient of his ministry is the entire creation plants animals nature etc everything that was made because without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and so everything that came from him has that life and that life is the holy spirit i have profound respect for science we have been able to advance so well in science especially in recent times people are still trying to disintegrate atoms to see if they can find a lot of other things you know and so on and so forth let me tell you behind if we keep breaking down breaking down breaking down breaking down we will arrive at one conclusion the unit of life is the word of god but in that word of god is the spirit of god ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 the spirit entered me when he spake unto me verse 2 the spirit entered me so the word of god contains the spirit of god the word of god contains the power of god habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 amplified habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 amplified it says and his brightness was like the sunlight and the rays streamed from his hand and there in the sunlight splendor was the hiding place of his power when you break life into its finest what you will meet is the word of god we call it energy we call it matter i don't mean to abuse and insult science but I can tell you from the authority of scripture, the spirit of God is the life factor of the entire creation. Are we together? The second recipient of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, according to scripture, is the unbeliever. The unbeliever is not supposed to be an insultive word, it's a description, it's a state. Who is an unbeliever? One who has not had the opportunity to hear and to believe the gospel what is the gospel a revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus man and creation being the object of that love and that sacrifice that is the gospel for god so loved the world john 3 and verse 16 that he gave his one and only begotten now the firstborn among we the begotten that whosoever believes in him should not perish the bible says but have life eternal unbelievers he has a ministry to unbelievers what is his ministry to unbelievers conviction the holy spirit has a ministry of conviction to unbelievers john chapter 16 please john chapter 16 let's look at verse let's start from verse 13 john chapter 16 it says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you please back down a little i'm looking for the scripture where find it for me if you can okay i think that should be john 16 from verse 7 go down to verse 7 same scripture verse 7 please john 16 and verse 7 now listen it says nevertheless jesus is speaking now i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter the comforter will not come to you is the greek word alos parakletos the word alos means of the same material and the same mission the opposite is heteros alos paracletos the paraclet he says the comforter will not come unto you but if i depart i will send him unto you verse 8 
when he is come what will be his mission his first assignment is he will reprove the world of three things number one of sin number two of righteousness number three of judgment he buttresses on that point verse nine of sin because they believe not on me so what is the sin there unbelief of righteousness because i go to my father and ye see me no more verse 11 of judgment because the prince of this world is judged listen to me the primary assignment of the holy spirit to unbelievers is conviction this is powerful so whilst you are listening to me now and the world is listening to me assuming i'm on a crusade ground while i am teaching sharing like reinhard bonke of blessed memory sharing like billy graham of blessed memory whilst you are talking it doesn't matter what expression it comes with in that crusade ground the holy ghost is hovering around the people bringing conviction what does it mean to convict to bring an awareness to plant in you seriousness over something conviction an awareness nobody sustains the power to save any sinner just with intelligence and oratory it takes the power of the holy spirit because there is a law that works in every sinner romans chapter 8 and verse 1 it says there is therefore now no condemnation it says to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit here it is verse 2 for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus had made me free not just from sin but a law of sin that leads to death every time you are sharing the gospel please listen to me believers every time you are talking to an unbeliever you are telling him about jesus the love of jesus I want you to expect at the back of your mind that the paraclete is there with you creating conviction this is what happened in the book of acts chapter 3 when they came and met the people they said who are these guys who are drunk with new wine and peter said no we are not drunk with new wine this is only nine o'clock in the morning but this is that this is that which prophet joel spoke about and now he began he went to david he went to joel and when he spoke to them the bible says they were caught to the heart that's the holy spirit and they said men and brethren what do we do he says repent for the remission of your sin and then you will be baptized and you will receive this promise for this promise is unto you and unto your children your children's children as many as are far off and in one day three thousand people came to jesus the convicting power of the holy spirit he does not only convict he compels is the greek word anakazo the compelling power of the spirit so that he will have men he can convict he also sustains the power to draw them from wherever they are and bring them to the atmosphere where they can hear the gospel this is powerful this is why we pray for people listen to me this is the entire idea about wanting more and more people to hear the gospel it's not just a celebration of crowd to show that a man of god has such influence over a city no jesus died for men largely and then creation so if he wants you to truly be an advocate of this gospel there must be a way of bringing men to you for god so loved the world why do we pray every time that god brings people to this place we don't just pray because we're ambitious people trying to look for a way of building an excelling career not at all we realize that until men come they will not have an opportunity to hear the gospel thank god for internet right now there are tens of thousands of people following online from different nations and they now have the opportunity to hear to be mentored to be built everybody say conviction so whilst you prepare to do the work of an evangelist which is a mandate for all believers you must know at the back of your mind that while I'm teaching, because some of you are not able to win souls because you think, I don't speak very well, I don't know all of the scriptures. If the Holy Ghost is not with you, if you are not conscious of his ministry to convict, you will only waste your time trying to talk to a sinner. He will listen to you talk for over 30 minutes and you say, in this book, what happened? And you begin a debate there that ends you in anger. many people have tried to go and preach the gospel without the consciousness of his convicting power 
let me tell you this when the power of the holy spirit to convict is in a place you can sing a song about redemption and say come to jesus and people will run and come out because in that song once the message of salvation is captured in it i am not ashamed of the gospel he says for it is the power not just the suggestion the power of god unto salvation say amen, amen. so that you leave this place this night conscious of the fact that the holy spirit has a ministry to unbelievers now you are not afraid of their faces because sometimes you'll be talking to people that when you look at their faces as if their face is so discouraging will this guy ever give his life to christ whilst you're talking they're not even giving you the attention don't mind them the holy ghost is walking at the end of that you will see let's listen go back to your family members some of you have family members that are not saved you've been advising them that's why they are not saved they need more than an advice they need the gospel the only vaccination for sin is the gospel the way your life is going why don't you become a better person that's counseling that's not the gospel the gospel is a revelation of the love of the father jesus must be mentioned for it to be the gospel the love of the father must be mentioned for it to be the gospel the sacrifice of jesus are we blessed conviction let's hurry up what is his ministry the third recipient of his ministry let's do a quick recap number one the first recipient of his ministry is the entire creation number two unbelievers number three believers he has a ministry to believers in as much as he plays that role now let me tell you this please look up you have to learn this when come dave let me use you watch this assume with me for a moment that this gentleman is one who is an unbeliever he's not been born again he's not giving his life to jesus okay so i am teaching in church now and the convicting power of the holy spirit comes upon him watch this as i lead him to christ usually you would notice in the context of my prayer i might not even mention the word holy spirit why because there is no other name under heaven given unto men the bible says by which we must be saved the office of salvation is the office of the christ even though the administrator of salvation is the holy spirit you have to understand this jesus today is seated at the right hand of the father so when you sing a beautiful song into my heart into my heart come into my heart lord jesus remember come in today come in to stay come into my heart lord jesus beautiful now he receives the life of god you say jesus is in his heart you are right but the personality that comes in honor to that prayer is the holy spirit the holy spirit remember he's the extension of the presence of jesus so it is true from scripture that jesus lives in his heart but the personality that lives is the holy spirit the holy spirit is what we call eternal life he does not bring eternal life he is the life of god are we blessed so jesus is in his heart but it is the holy spirit representing the presence of jesus he lives in him jesus is in heaven as a person i hope you know that jesus left with his body as a man he did not leave his body behind the fact that jesus left with his body is the most classic proof that he's returning because you need a body to operate on earth it was difficult for him to come the first time he needed to rally around a woman to donate her womb for nine months now you don't need that again any moment he can come because he left with his body the next time you doubt if jesus is coming back remember he has a body that he can use are we blessed 
so the holy spirit comes in honor to that salvation prayer now watch this this gentleman just gave his life to christ he is now a believer what then is the next assignment of the holy spirit let me tell you this listen carefully he is now he's received jesus christ but he's not transformed his senses are still deadened he's still living in the flesh he's still a carnal man even though a saved one now the holy spirit begins the journey that we call repentance repentance is a journey it's not just a one-off thing no repentance means to realign your mind are we together now transformation is repentance hmm. so he says repent for the kingdom of god is within your reach now to repent means to realign your thinking and your understanding because your living comes from your thinking effective living comes from effective thinking are we learning god bless you so now for a believer what is the first assignment of the holy spirit my concern now is for a believer we know that for an unbeliever his job is pretty simple to bring conviction to the end that the unbeliever will hear and receive the gospel the benefit of receiving that gospel is the life of god there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son what is the assignment of the holy spirit now to a believer is found in first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 write this down please the first assignment of the holy ghost to a believer is to activate your spiritual senses before the word of god starts coming into you you are already deadened spiritually. 1 Corinthians 2.14. Please help us. The Bible says, but the natural man. Please read with me. It's projected. One to read. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. So even though this man is saved. Listen. If you leave that man this way many pastors and many leaders are, are listening to me do not leave members just born again and leave them there that harvest will rot and there will it will not be fruits that abide because even though they are saved they cannot do much for the kingdom because that transformation has not happened so what we largely do in church is that we save sinners and now they become believers in christ which is true and it's a fact and we leave them there after a few months we make them pastors we make them deacons we make them leaders in that state listen if you are not in the kingdom and even if you are in the kingdom and you are not transformed many spiritual activities will not make sense for instance why will a believer lock his himself in a room and dance and say i am walking my way to victory what does that mean if an, if an unbeliever or a believer that is not transformed sees you, he says this Christianity has turned adults into fools. It's foolishness unto him. Why will you say to sow a seed and you are saying you are using that seed to break lack, to break pop? It doesn't make sense. Why will you be praying in some kind of language? You are just praying gibberish for hours and you are praying and you believe you are generating power. Who said that's how they generate power? Are you seeing now so when you see anybody laughing at your experience your christian experience you already know the category now so you can show the person mercy by saying i think i know what you need you look when you want to bless people with books you gauge their spiritual levels what book will help this person now oh you were saved that's why great men like Reinhard Bonke, when you were saved on their crusade grounds, they had books that they would give you to help explain salvation and begin to show you the next step. What we do is that most times when the average believer is saved, in truth, he does not know what is the next port of call. He doesn't know what else to do. If he's fortunate, they can say, come to church. If it's a church that has a methodical system of growth and development, then happy for that man. Otherwise, he will have to freelance his ideas about spiritual growth. Are you seeing why some of us are not having efficiency in our spiritual experience? Your organs of interaction. Suddenly the things you once laughed at now begins to make sense. What is this about praying in tongues? Ba, 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 ba. All these people are shouting. And now the Holy Ghost quickens you. You are now alive to Christ. 
it now begins to make sense to you isn't it amazing that you used to laugh at people who were crying whilst they are prophesying they would kneel down and lift their hands and you laugh and say church people now look you are you are caught in that trap the holy ghost himself remember when you will stand at crusade grounds from a distance and laugh and say nigerians religion is what poor people do and and the holy ghost is just watching you now look 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 at you you are at the forefront of that advocacy listen do you know why i'm teaching you this because true love is based on understanding not just emotion now that you know this when unbelievers or baby christians as we call them when they laugh at certain advanced things we do in the kingdom there's no point looking down on them and insulting them you show compassion because they are communicating their level of infancy you don't flog a baby when he pulls on the ground or when he moves around playing he's a child but when he's five year old and a five year old child and he behaves like that now you know that something is wrong with that child and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture which is able to build you up you see that to make you wise unto salvation the organs of interaction with the holy spirit that's the first assignment of the holy spirit to believers please learn this we're going to pray shortly the organs of interaction he activates your spiritual senses the bible calls it being alive unto god now the fire the passion you now understand why we pray now you understand why we do the things that we do and with our hands lifted up we will worship our king and with our hands lifted up we come before you rejoicing with our hands lifted up to the sky and the world wonders why we just tell them we love in our king oh we just tell them we love Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kate katos kate branda kata pakotos koto breka teke nekata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.